I'm Katie Kempner, and welcome to Perspectives here at the Ipsos Girls Lounge at the Cannes Lion Festival. Right now, I'm thrilled to be talking with Marlena Pelio Lazar, who is the Chief Creative Officer of McDonald's. Welcome. Thank you. So uh, we have, I mean, we started talking, we have, I have so much to ask you, but what if we just start um, a little bit, just tell us a little bit about your career. I did not have the goal, let's see, I'm going to be in advertising my entire life. I actually, as uh, we were talking, I started to be, I was a child actress. And when I realized that probably I was not going to take Meryl Streep's place, uh, my life took a different turn. Actually, I, my degrees are in film writing and in English, and I became very interested in that. Then I thought I might be a screenwriter. And at that time, there weren't a lot of cable stations, there weren't this, but I really set my sights then on wanting to be in television news. And when my auditions were not going so, so well, I'll just say that, including um, interviewing for a weather duck uh, kind of position in uh, Terre Haute, Indiana, you sort of start thinking, you know what, maybe I, I need to reconsider here. So I did everything. I went, then I enrolled in business school, and then I was going to go to law school. And just like a lot of people say on their way, people in advertising were always on their way to somewhere else. And I thought I was going to be on my way to somewhere else. But I happened to get an internship at, I'm from Detroit, and I happened to get an internship at an agency there and it wasn't that I was an extremely wonderful copywriter it's just that this particular agency entered a lot of award shows so the law of averages says sooner or later if you do that you might win something <laughs> and so I was a very young girl and um, I won some awards and it caught the attention I don't know why but it did of Leo Burnett so they called me up and said would you be interested in you know, coming to Leo Burnett to interview. And at that time, they hired a lot of young people. I thought, okay, I, coming from Detroit, that's only like a four hour drive. I hopped in my little Mustang and drove to um, Chicago and thought, well, I'll spend the day. And at that time, they had a big red book that told you what agencies were in the book. So I yeah. figured I might as well make it worth my while. I didn't know very much about advertising, having never taken a course in it or anything. And I went down the list and I made all these appointments and they were kind enough to schedule me. I couldn't even believe it. And I went to Leo Burnett and um, you go through this whole little interview thing. And I happened to interview with a guy that would become the chairman at the time. He was the creative director. So I didn't have much of a sample book, mm -hmm. but uh, I had some. I had those ads that had won, had won awards and I had a couple of other writing samples. And he kind of went through my book. This is a Thursday. I remember this very vividly, and he tells this story to everybody. But um, a Thursday, and he said, "We need you to start on Monday." And I said, "Well, I don't even live here. I, I, I don't live here, and I've made all these other appointments." And I said, "You know, you're really a nice man, but I don't think I'll be doing this in six months." And well, you know, that would be unfair. It looks like you really need somebody <laughs> to do that. And he said, he looked up at me and he said, well, here's what I think you should do. I think you should see these other people and then come back at the end of the day. And, and I was so impressed because they were going to put me up in a hotel. Oh, and wow. so it was like a hotel and pay for my dinner. And I mean, oh my God, this advertising life is pretty good. And uh, I went to these other things and they were all nice too. And I went back and he said, you know, I promise you, if you come to Leo Burnett, we'll try to make it worth your while. And uh, I said, okay, okay. And I went home, I packed up my car, and I started my life kind of in, in uh, advertising. And I stayed at Leo Burnett uh, for 20 years. And I got another opportunity at Ogilvy and Mather, and it was time for me to go on experience, but I had never been in very many agencies, and I literally moved down the street. <laughs> you know, there was like, it's Wacker Drive, you literally move a block away or, or something. And I, for the first time, worked in a female management. I was hired by Shelley Lazarus, mm -hmm. and uh, the management team in Chicago were all women, and I had never really worked like, like that. And it was a wonderful, experience and I never thought I would leave there either I you know I was kind of you know just thinking well this is this is where I was meant to be and I do some speaking for the Ad Federation 
and I happened to give um, a speech on brands, and it happened that the chairman of McDonald's was in the audience, sitting with my former agency, right? Because uh, Leo Burnett had uh, part of the McDonald's business. Mm -hmm. And you know how people say to you, I'd really like to meet you, we ought to have coffee sometimes. Right. Here all the time yeah, they say here that. Here all the time, love <laughs> right. you, you know, and all that. And, I, and he came up and he said it was really an interesting talk and would you like to meet sometime? And I go, oh, thank you, you know, the, the whole thing. And he was just really nice. And three days later, I got a call from his office that he was going to be, you know, somewhere in the in the Loop area of Chicago, and we'd like to meet. And it was at a time when things were uh, challenging at McDonald's, so I'm reading all the headlines and, and stuff, and we had a nice talk. And he leaned over to me the same way that how I had started in advertising. He said, have you ever thought about coming to the client side? And I said, oh, not, no. I said, you, you have to do some research on me. I love to take brands and I love the creativity of it. I'm not that. And uh, I, I'm happy to give you some names and I'm happy to do that. And I said, but thank you so much for asking me uh -huh. that. And he, I went away and I went back to my, you know, day-to-day -day job. And I was, we were working on Sears at the time and uh, called me again. And Bob Scarpelli and I had competed on a lottery account in Chicago, and the deal was always that one would have to take the other out to dinner. So he had to call me because it happened that Ogilvy bested them in this lottery thing. So we're having, we're having dinner, and he said, you know, McDonald's has talked to me about you. And, uh, and I go, oh, listen here. You know, he, he was saying, he said, you know what, Marlena, I think you might like this. And I said, you're just saying this to get rid of me. Because you, I said, this is like an ad movie where right. you like try to, you know, I said, no, you know, I think you should like talk to them. This might be a great thing. And I'll tell you how I made that decision. You talk about split second decisions. I made that decision based on uh, the fact, well, one, I would get to shape a job. And the second part was that my son at the time, my younger son was about nine years old. And I always tell people, and I believe this, that you should always take an adventure. You can always yeah. go back, tough to go forward, tough to push yourself forward and try these things. Because it's, it's scary, it's scary. And the, uh, the last blog post that I just wrote for the Huffington Post was about fear stopping you. Yes. You know, so wh what do you do? Well, in this case, my son sat on the edge of the bed because I, this is where a parent's words come back to haunt you right here. You should be very careful in what you say because sometimes they do listen to you. Um, he said to me, I don't get it. You get to eat Big Macs. I'm getting Happy Meal toys. What, what's, your, what's your deal here? As much as I loved my experience working with these women at, at Ogilvy and, you know, kind of working to build the Chicago office and, and stuff, I, um, I went, okay. And I came at the most challenging time in the company had ever experienced. That was the other thing. And there was a lot of controversy about, about that and about me going there. And um, I say, you know, about the fear part. I don't know if it was immense ego or my, the fact that I had made this leap and I didn't want to say about a failure. Mm -hmm that I hung in there and you know happily was part of the turnaround the architect of the campaign yeah. and things that I would not normally get and you talk about about fear sometimes when you make the leap it is the most liberating thing and I like to say that that has really helped me on the fear that I believe that I will learn something new every day and so it kind of alleviates the thing but we do we do stop because we, you know, we have all this kind of stuff, and again, we tell everybody in life, "Oh, you should take the risk." And I, and I find this true about change too. Yeah, is that you say, "Oh, I can change." Intellectually, everybody says that. Emotionally, it's a quite different thing, and it, it's more like, "You didn't mean me, right?" Like, right. like I, I, you didn't mean for me to take that risk but you and do just it. change. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll we'll catch you later on, uh, yeah. on that. So. No, that's an excellent point. So you, you mentioned your son. I know you have two sons. Yes. You had said it was never an option that you weren't going to be a working yes. mom. Same thing for me. That yeah. was never an option. So can you talk a little bit how you found balance as you raising them and being a mother? Having children for me actually 
uh, changed me forever in, in, good, in good ways, but it actually made my career better. Um, I think until then I was married at a very young age and both my husband and I were very career kind of oriented and we were having a good time with each other. We kind of forgot to have kids <laughs> and then, then we said, oh, well that might be a good idea. I had difficulty having children, which was another, another part of this. You know, after all this time, I got, oh my goodness, it's hard now? It, it, it was really hard and I had to kind of balance how on that part of it. When I had my, my son, my, my first one. Financially, it was not an option for me to stay, to stay home. Um, my husband is an academic and, and an accomplished one, but you know, it's, it's not a hedge fund uh, guy either, yeah. uh, you know, on that. And so you kind of have to, you have to learn how to, how to do that. And I say, I was not perfect at it, and I'm not perfect at it now. And once I realized I wasn't going to be perfect, and I was able to make some choices on things. For instance, we had a wonderful caregiver. In fact, she has been with us the entire time. It's sort of an extended family. We are, uh, our background is Romanian, and she is a Romanian uh, caregiver, and that is their, their job. They believe in caring for the family. So I never had to worry about that my child was not being cared for. Right. Right, so that immediately alleviated some of the stress of the balance. And she said to me once, I used to be so crazy, anal retentive about how the house was cleaned and how this was done and that. And she said to me once, you know, the, the expression she calls me, Domna. Domna, my job is to care for this home. Your job is to go to work. <laughs> And we lived in the, in the city where the agency was. So I was 10 minutes from home. And so when there were things happening at school, I could arrange things. You know, I didn't go to lunch, or I didn't do some of these other kinds of right. things, or, or, or do that. I would be able to go to school and watch the book report being delivered. And my husband, and is, a great partner in this, and had a little more flexible schedule, yeah. and he would, cook dinner while they were doing their homework. And then I, I would come in. And I often say, my husband is a better mom on certain things, and I'm a better dad on that. But it was never perfect, and it's sort of fun that it wasn't perfect. I think it's so important for women like you that seem like they have everything together to, to say this and to say, look, you know, it's not easy, not everything is perfect. You know what, I take my craft very seriously, myself not so much. Which is also and I, important. And it's so important, and particularly for women. And you know, a, a lot of men that I've worked for have actually helped me with this. Because, you know, I stopped taking things so personally. And especially yeah. learn this, I, I say one of the big learning things, I actually learned this at McDonald's, that where they are so committed to excellence on everything, you know, and, and no matter what it is, right? Even if the cup or anything, it's all about how can we make this better? Is this the best that we can do? Yeah. And <clears throat> when you're getting, as I call in a feedback rich environment, and especially with women and, and balancing, you think everything is kind of, you know, about you. <laughs> you know, that it's so personal. Yeah. And I've been so helped by that, said, that's not, do you think that's like a personal kind of thing? Because you know, you're ready to go off on the ledge because you yeah. think it's all about you. You're, you know, you're not worthy, you're not this. And it really isn't. It's about the business, it's about other kinds of things. It's about the work. It's not so much about, about you. And you can lighten up about it. Just to build on that advice, the last question I want to ask you, which I like to ask all my guests at the end, is just if you had one piece of advice that has helped guide you through this very interesting career that, you've, that you have had and have, what would it be? I uh, do say this to a lot. I mentor a lot of women that are starting out in the business. And I say these two, this little sentence, wear comfortable shoes. And I don't mean just your Jimmy Choo's or, or, or that. Wear, this is a whole journey. It, life is long, not necessarily short. And you need to pace yourself. Things sometimes get so tough and you really just can't see your, your way around it. If you wait a little bit, if you wait a little bit, there's something else 
right? There, there is something else. And that's why I say wear comfortable shoes because you know what? Sometimes you're just running, you're running on, on, on the thing and your feet hurt. Yeah. <laughs> and your feet hurt. Wear comfortable shoes. That's terrific advice. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking with pleasure you. Pleasure to meet you and talk with you.